Hey everyone, my name is Kabi and today we are going to watch another battle in the non-mirror matchup as the red dog player this time will be seeing Rigord whom I already showed uh, previously Rigord is one of the game devs and uh, he is both playing on the decent level and also try to use many things that probably the other players don't do as often just in order to explore if they're really working or not working and uh, if players may complain on the particular units or strategy for a reason or they just have not invented uh, the mentioned things uh, good enough so in this battle as you probably already figure out from my introductions and uh, also the video naming Rigard is going to use the less common strategy and uh, in particular will use a bomber technique again we've already witnessed this one in the previous game from white unicorn who also joined the dev screw recently and uh, rigor also will be using this stuff and as his opponent will be another guy who we also have uh, seen on the channel it is Svei and he's famous for uh, trying a bit unusual stuff sometimes and also he's always trying to invent and reinvent something and figure out the best possible opening and build orders so he's sort of not really a math guy uh, by which I mean he isn't uh, really a developer who's highly, highly involved with the mathematics itself but he's just a player who likes to take his time along with a notebook and uh, with a pen or pencil and write down a couple of lines of uh, what timing and what uh, for what cost he's gonna build in what order and stuff like that so there are players who like to explore the game uh, this way and there are guys who uh, don't uh, for example, I don't really like it, not really fond of doing this, so I honestly just uh, play a bit of a freestyle in terms of build orders, just doing the things, so they are probably not 100% optimized, and uh, it has uh, the pros as well as the cons, of course, but uh, anyways, we are all about to have fun from playing the game, of course, so each player is in the right to have fun his way so anyways we can see how Rigard is going to Rex and the totem of orcs which uh, probably means that he's gonna play the wolf riders and uh, by the time his goon approaching the enemy's base who started with the attack of dwarves and actually you don't really want to play wolf riders against the uh, war smith because war smith uh, deal um, splash damage and since wolf riders uh, tend to be created uh, in mass like uh, you always want to surround everyone with the wolf riders to take him down quickly so they suffer strongly from the splash damage obviously so even though warsmith don't do any kind of a bonus damage to the cavalry they really beat the wolf riders so probably it would be better for Rigor to switch off to something but at the same time he's already up to the two barracks so he can't really just casually say like all right i'm gonna play i don't know like mass zombie uh, what he did on this particular map against markley back in the previous one-on-one -on -one tournament but this is not the case because he took uh, and the entirely other branch but now staying on the second tier he's adding the goblin lab so actually he's still switching off to something having just two wolf riders and not adding anything else so it is just two goons and the two wolf riders and uh, at the same time Zvei is up to four warsmith along with the two swordsmen and he's upgrading to the third tier already which probably should be meaning that he's about to play bikers but he's actually 
not building any kind uh, of a factory, right? So he's just uh, claiming the chest to his name and he was able to do uh, so successfully and uh, always, also they summoned uh, the bombardier so he should be fine against this wolf rider but still this little wolf deals quite a bit of damage killing a couple of workers and it seems that Svei honestly is a bit late with this factor I'm not sure for what reason he's floated to this high amount of resources now adding the elder of heroes of the second tier but he's missing a racial, a racial building for that so I'm not really sure what he's up to but it seems that he's gonna add a human monument and uh, now Rigard also started adding the bombers so he's playing a funny tier 1 stuff actually the wolf riders are not exactly tier 1 because you need uh, you need a second tier of the main building uh, to create them but at the same time you still get them get them from the first racks right so you can still call them the tier 1 unit but uh, it's not really that important what you call them but you can really get them early on but still not earlier than the Citadel 2 because you need the Totem of Orcs, which is only available on the second tier of the main building. So, anyway, this is the low tech army as well as the Sveis. But Svei is um, heading to the middle of the map to get the big chest, and at the same time, Rigor reinforcing to his main army to connect those bombers with the main army and then connect those bombers with the building apparently so now the ways uh, through the bottom part of the map comes to assault the uh, uh, the, the Zvez, uh, base so rigor does and he almost took down the farm the factory is very exposed as well and it seems as Triggered is about to take down the buff racial building at once, but actually a human monument survives, and for some reasons they still didn't um, start uh, summoning the Paladin. Uh, Rigor decided to go for the circle of the power along with the Alchemist Paral, but see how good those warsmiths are against the melee units of the Dark, but at the same time, with the Circle of Power, Rigor was able to take down Paladin and uh, then Warsmith along, having a hard time against Alchemist who deals the bonus damage uh, because all the starting units are vulnerable to the magic damage that Alchemist does. And uh, Alchemist survives right here, and at the same time, Rigard also brought here the worker. So he's casually building the Napalm Tower, and it seems that this assault is not really about to to end anytime soon. Svei was uh, thinking as far as to add uh, his artillery tower on the uh, mana well, but probably it would be a better idea for him. To just destroy the tower right now and rebuild it here to defend because I don't really see how he can even take down this tower. Now Alchemist uses his bottle to cut the gold income which is a nice idea. Zvei at the same time has enough gold in the stash shop so he can just uh, rehire the workers here Copter trying to finish off the Alchemist doing so and then of course helicopters will be able to also take down the Napalm Tower earlier or later but uh, this uh, thing doesn't attack air so it probably would be a better idea to just attack it straight but the Wolf Rider also keeps destroying the workers and stays down to one worker so far Paladin using his um, Dome of the Light to tank even more damage. The second copter is on the map, so Zvei finally destroyed the Napalm Tower, but 
is down to two workers right now. But at the same time, Rigot isn't really controlling the chest end. Honestly, I think that uh, it is a big downside of his play in this game. Because even though you, are, uh, you clearly feel that you are leading, you're still better uh, work out, you know? And uh, you, you don't really have all the info and uh, you can't know how many gold they have and uh, what they might even be having on the map. Who knows if there is no other factory somewhere else. So you really want to work out but at the same time, Rigard used this wonderful technique, using the circle of power, destroying bloody everything, leaving his way on pretty much nothing. And uh, the trick here is just as hard as to take down the two copters finally, but it is not really hard because Rigard has the tatama forks and he can uh, get the X masters as well as the orc tower so actually even a sheer alchemist can deal with those two helicopters many bombers were trading traded for paladin and on this the game's pretty much it so uh, rigor just uh, took the starting unit added the bombers uh, went uh, attacking with an apple tower and it was enough to shut down a uh, fast tier 3 strategy when it wasn't really maintained well with uh, the defensing buildings. Alright, but I wasn't gonna wrap the video on that and we are proceeding to the 2 versus 2 game and uh, here we are having Rigard appearing as the orange player against uh, playing the dark and against will be using something around the same technique along with him is some not renamed uh, player number something so we're gonna call him just the player he's he has around 4.4k uh, so probably a beginner player as the green dog player uh, is uh, Igor 1348 we'll call him just Igor I also uploaded uh, Iker's game on my personal channel, which is called Kabe War Legends. But uh, there he played the light, but Iker's main faction is dark, so he's playing his main faction in this game. And along with him is uh, Gusar, he, uh, that is his teammate. Iker also played on the previous 2v2 tournament with the Gusar's wife, I believe. His name is Olga. But this time around, the guy seems to be playing himself. So we have light and dark against dark and dark. And let's see what's gonna happen. Here we can spot Rigard using the slave sweep. And pretty much all the workers with this kind of the resources layout. And uh, here the red player decided to pull the workers far on the left also building the two sawmills which of course doesn't make any sense but the guy seems to be the beginner player and haven't figured out so far if you even need the two sawmills spoiler you don't but many beginner players do that because they sort of feel that it should be giving you something, and they apparently don't read the description. Actually, I think I'm gonna add in the description it this uh, as plainly as just mentioning that additional sawmill doesn't uh, do anything. I'm gonna find the right wording for that. Anyways, here we have a portion of the nice micro. Rigor trying uh, to make maximum uh, value out of his units. One goon on the low HP stays back. Because Goblin Lab was about to finish and the goon is uh, 
restoring his health really quickly. And we see how uh, Igor and uh, Gusar are reinforcing to the left part of the map, trying to take down Rigot. And that is actually a perfect idea, because if you go to the two against um, the poorly balanced pair, where one player is significantly stronger than the other, of course you want to take down the stronger guy, because while you will be messing around with the weaker guy, the stronger guy might have enough to actually take you both, take down you both later on. But if you take down the stronger guy, the weaker guy can't uh, do anything to you. So they are trying to take down Rikot, but he saw that their forces were gathering on the watchtower, so he opted for the Napalm Tower, thinking that it will uh, it, it will buy enough time. So he decided to go for the uh, Elemental to obtain a control on the Mana Well, but that was for the case where those guys would be waiting longer. They decided to uh, apply pressure already, so Rigor had to pull back and uh, stop to uh, interrupt his uh, Mana Well acquiring, but uh, actually he traded perfectly, he didn't lose much. And now he decided to go forward rather than capturing the mana well. And uh, at the same time, Igor's reinforcing with the Aeronaut already. So he's actually playing the two workshop Aeronauts. And that is, of course, a scary strategy, especially if, you, if we mention that uh, Kusar's playing knights and copters. So both strategies are very dangerous. And uh, they are not really easy to counter, because imagine that you are going like uh, mass skeleton archers, because there are air, but then the knights will destroy them, and also copters do a great damage, because usually skeleton archers are being stacked together. In the meantime, the red player is not even trying to take the chest, which was available for entirely free for almost a minute. But we can't really wait from the beginner player to go out on the map to fight for the chest. That is of course an advanced level of uh, understanding of the game. And here he's trying to sort of maintain map control with the buildings that usually don't work, not with the Tower of Mana least but uh, whatever he's gonna lose his tower so he's gonna lose his uh, his mana bank but uh, this tower is gonna help him better and this time around the blue team is going to assault a weaker player just as they wasn't able to take down Rigor actually think that they probably could have taken down Rigor with so much air but they decided to go for the other guy and um, the towers won a lot of time knights also engaging to the worker line but uh, honestly the red guy has enough of goons to deal with the knights the blue team's trying to take down the citadel Rigor coming to help but all he has to attack air is actually alchemist so far but the red guy is uh, hiring more skeleton archers who probably might help and at the same time Rigor is using the same uh, awesome technique again killing the main building for Gusar also killing something else didn't really notice but uh, human monument survives but uh, Gusar has to take a chest now to recreate to rebuild his castle and uh, Elkham is dead so the red guy is still suffering and he lost his uh, citadel as well and here also Igor's knight trying to apply pressure to the worker to the slaves rather they call that and um, 
triggered at the workshop. So now he's on the 1-1 one -one building set, which means one workshop, one Rex, one workshop. If he would be adding the dark gate, that would be 1-1-1. One -one -one. So people usually call it that in StarCraft and also in War Legends. It is interesting that the red guy still has a lot of gold, so he keeps producing the skeleton archers. Probably it would be better for him to, to cut this production and uh, try to get enough money on Citadel, but he charges it uh, so that uh, if he wouldn't be adding skeleton archers, uh, the blue team would just kill him. So it's better to at least help with something and probably win the game as a team, so that deserves respect, I think. Because rather than just try to play sort of a normal game, uh, he's being uh, trying to help uh, to get to his teammate. At the same time, Gusark's trying to take the chest that he needs so badly because he's out of castle as well another bomber it seems and uh, worker wasn't able to maintain that uh, chest but uh, two aeronauts uh, killed the skeleton archer still nobody taken the chest and at the same time rigor uh, came to a counter attack so he's about to... actually that tower of mana seems to be the better target to me because what a player still can do while they're in the game um, they can use the scrolls obviously so you can destroy the uh, mana tower to deny them from having a big amount of mana to use the strong scrolls they still can use like higher acceleration or fortification if they are light but at least not something like uh, Meteorite or Ring of Fire or whatever. All right, so now Riga destroyed the two mana towers. The blue player is down to a few walkers and the copter. And now Rigard's taken up to the third tier. Still not panicking, adding more bombers building knots and the alchemist and not uh, and not much apart from that so now both sides have alchemists Rigard's probably better to take down the tower of mana but here comes the red guy he even has a hero look at him he has the eater so now he is able to use his hero in a very useful fashion. So the red team uses the circle of power. Igor's trying to repair the castle and uh, he's, been, he's been able to do this quite successfully so far. Actually, we are considering making repairing slower because uh, currently the workers repair really quickly. So sometimes you can't even take down the building with a lot of units. So. We are really considering to nerf uh, the repair, but uh, now it seems that bombers will be able to nerf the repair, because Igor doesn't have any more of uh, money to rebuild his main building, and uh, now Igor can just pull back. Yeah, but that's true that the blue team has enough here to finally deal with this attack, but they obviously can't proceed the game because they don't have any income and rigor is entirely fine just pushing the team with the bombers all the game along and surviving with that while his enemies haven't so again many players don't count bombers as something valuable in the game but i think that those games from rigor really show to us that Bombers uh, can make the difference in the game. Now Igor trying to recreate his citadel, but uh, it is of course quite obvious that he can't do much because his supply blocked 
and uh, doesn't uh, really have uh, great units to trade with what Rigger has and they can't even kill bombers quickly enough so that is pretty much it and we are not gonna spend any more time thank you guys for watching try out this bombers technique in your game and uh, as for me i'm saying bye bye and i'll see you in the next videos